David, what are the boundaries of science? Where is it beyond which science cannot go? Well, um, I don't think there have to be any boundaries. Um, the boundaries, the current boundaries are those questions that we can ask that are amenable to observation or experiment or calculation. There are questions beyond that that are fuzzily often uh, put uh, that are not amenable to observation or measurement or calculation, uh, but still are questions that bug us and, <laughs> and we think about. Like, And uh, I'm often asked about when I talk about the wonderful questions that we are posed to answer and or the questions we have answered, people say, well, but what about why is there something rather than nothing? Well, that's an interesting question, and I must say, every once in a while, I wonder why is there something rather than nothing, but it's the kind of question that is not amenable to measurement or experiment or calculation, and uh, therefore, the, I find it's sort of less useful or fruitful, I think, uh, to worry about at this point. But questions have it, as I um, remarked on previously, evolve as time goes on, and questions that at one point were not amenable to scientific uh, study, the nature of life, the origin of the universe, uh, later, as we know more, become amenable to scientific uh, uh, research, and it might very well be that any question eventually will be well posed enough to be amenable to scientific research, and there are no boundaries. Let's take the question you asked, why is there something rather than nothing? That is, as you say, now not uh, susceptible to observation, experiment, or calculation. Is it a legitimate question? It's clearly a legitimate question in the sense that it, I must say it occurs to everyone at some point, <laughs> uh, usually in, in adolescence. Um, usually at night. <laughs> usually at night. But, uh, but it's a kind of question that science, one of the uh, things we've really learned over the centuries uh, is to try to distinguish such questions from questions that are amenable to observation, measurement, calculation, because in the latter we, we can actually make progress and test our mistakes. Most of the new ideas we come up with are wrong, and most of our preconceptions about reality are wrong, and we continually need to test these ideas against reality, either by observation or by measurement, prediction and measurement, or by calculation, prediction and measurement. And um, the danger in questions that are not amenable to those kinds of uh, tests is uh, that we go off in the wrong direction. And we've seen that over history, and we have no assurance in our ability to uh, make progress without those constraints of observation, and experiment, and measurement, and logical consistency and calculation. If and when we come to the point where we have this fundamental theory that can indeed explain all of the constants and laws in a simple, final, necessary, yeah. and sufficient way, we will still have the question, yeah. why is that there rather than nothing there? Yes. So it could very well be that questions like that, which it could be two things. One is that that's such an ill-posed question that we will understand at some point, boy, that was a stupid question to ask. We should have asked something much more specific or much richer. Most likely, that's the case. It could also be that when that happens, we'll begin to answer that question, although that question might be much more much more complex than the way we tend to put it. Uh, it's very easy to recognize uh, a well-posed question. 
sort of a well-posed question is something you could give to a PhD student. They could get a thesis after a finite number of years. <laughs> uh, this is not a question you could give to a student and expect that they would answer it to get their thesis, not just uh, philosophize about it, but answer it in a way that people would accept according to certain, you know, you're defining question as as a as something that is susceptible to an answer. answer. Yes, and that it's is, not clear to me that that one has to uh, no. use the word question for that limited purpose. Indeed, and I c will continue in the middle of the night, as you say, to wonder why there is something rather than nothing, but suspect very much that no progress will be made on that answering that question. Uh, for a long time, unlike questions such as, what is life? I'm sure people woke up in the middle of the night saying, what is life? Now, if somebody wakes up in the middle of the night and says, what is life? You can point them to a whole library where they can, in fact, understand what is life or begin to. Uh, so, I don't know. Maybe one day the question why there is something rather than nothing will be broken down into 20 different questions, each of them quite interesting and all connected, and we'll begin to make progress in understanding that. But it seems to me a long way to go and not worth wasting our time. <laughs>